Mikhailo Mudrik has gone to Chelsea in a reported deal worth 87 million and will he be the one to change Chelsea's fortunes around? Only time will tell. But what's going on guys, it is Catch back with another video on the channel and I just want to say thank you for the recent support on the channel. Um, thank you for all the new subscribers who have recently subscribed uh, and if you want to continue seeing more, please do like, share and subscribe and let's get straight into this next video. So yes, you did indeed hear that correctly. Mikhailo Mudrik has moved to Chelsea from Shakhtar Donetsk for a reported £87 million fee, which is apparently what Shakhtar were holding out for from Chelsea. And for a player that is only you know, done a bit in the Ukrainian Premier League and shone a little bit in the Champions League, is it a big investment that probably doesn't make a lot of sense yes in some circumstances but Chelsea have obviously seen a lot of potential in him uh, and they've also managed to hijack the deal of Arsenal as well who were very interested in this player um, and the fact that he's now shown up at Chelsea just proves that you know Chelsea have the financial mind behind him through Todd Bowley to just do these sorts of deals on a whim uh, I think Arsenal will be annoyed at the fact that they missed out on a player of his caliber but given their current league status and financial status is probably not a good deal for them um, will it be a good deal for Chelsea see in the future the only time will tell but um you know spending 87 million on any player is a bit ridiculous in any transfer market but you know the market's now that inflated that you know clubs are holding out for exorbitant fees and other clubs are paying them um which is quite interesting when you think about it but i guess it all comes back down to the neymar transfer many years ago which has changed the transfer market altogether and now shows that more clubs are holding out for these higher fees and making uh, buying clubs work a lot more to sort of uh, get deals across the line but anyway we'll see how michaela mudrick does at chelsea apologies if i've butchered his name i do not know how to say it but uh, yeah only time will tell and see how it goes speaking of arsenal they managed to win the north london derby two thanks to goals from Martin Odegaard and a very fortunate goal through a Hugo Lloris own goal but Arsenal have now solidified their title credentials as the, the current league leaders they're now eight points clear of second placed Man City I believe it is um, and yeah now really only time will tell to see if Arsenal can hold on um, it definitely would make um, you know, a lot more sense having a new winner instead of the same winner every couple of years um, but you know Arsenal still have a big game against the much rejuvenated Manchester United coming up so you know the title race is still there um, I think it'll probably go down to Arsenal and Man City at the end of the day but Newcastle and Manchester United are determined to make a fist of it and it will all probably depend on Arsenal's game with Man United I think if Arsenal win that I think that now, even though it's still only halfway in the season, I think they can maintain it and the title is pretty much as good as theirs. But uh, they got to keep their standards up because a couple of slips and Man City will be right there to take it. And that they've done that in the past, Man City. We know that they can do that sort of thing. And with a goal machine like Erling Haaland, it'll be only a matter of time before they catch Arsenal. But can Arsenal hold on? Put your comments in the description below and we'll see what happens. Newcastle, meanwhile, managed to steal a last-minute, 89th-minute winner at home against a really rejuvenated and upbeat Fulham. Uh, it was Alexander Isaac's 89th-minute goal that helped the Bagpies to a 1-0 victory, but it could have all been for naught as Newcastle did give away a penalty to Fulham late in the second half around the 70th minute. And, you know, being or how it is Newcastle fans would have dreaded if that had gone in and to be perfectly honest it actually did go in uh, Alexander Mitrovic did stumble uh, as he went to take the penalty but in doing so he managed to kick it twice while kicking it well, while scoring the goal uh, which under Premier League rules is not allowed to kick the ball twice from the penalty spot so as it happens the goal was ruled out and uh, Isaac weirdly enough came on a minute later and eventually did score uh, that winner uh, beautiful uh, well, a fortunate header that managed to secure Newcastle another three points and keep them in the top three at this current point in time they're only a point behind Man City and ahead of Man United on goal difference but Newcastle have played a game more so I guess we'll see how that goes for Newcastle but I believe they should be able to hang on to top four considering how Tottenham Chelsea and Liverpool have all been doing this season um, if they can hold it then that'd be massive steps 
to recovery for Newcastle and with all that Saudi investment they might be the next title contenders around the corner in the coming seasons but I guess only time will tell there. Barcelona meanwhile captured their first silverware of the season winning the Spanish Super Cup 3-1 against Real Madrid in Saudi Arabia. And it was Gavi who opened the scoring on 33 minutes, which was uh, then doubled by Robert Lewandowski on the stroke of half time. And then Pedri finished them off around midway through the second half. And only a Karim Benzema uh, penalty was, any con was the only consolation, I should say, uh, for Real Madrid as they went down 3-1 in the end. And maybe Xavi has finally got Barcelona going in the right direction. But only time will tell. It's only a matter of time. it's only a matter of results, I should say, until Barcelona go back to being quite mediocre. But this will give them a lot of uh, hope and a lot of drive towards the end of the season. They are at the moment, I believe. I think they're leading La Liga as well. Uh, yeah, three points out of Real Madrid uh, at the moment, and with a stronger goal difference. So they're looking good, Barcelona. But only time will tell to see. It will tell, I guess, to see if they can maintain that over a very very good Real Madrid squad. But that has been the end of this video, guys. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you with another video very soon. Have a good one, guys. Bye.